Here we are once again, smiling. We're ready to go. We were giggling just a moment ago. <laughs> and uh, welcome to the Mental Health Show. And the reason we're giggling is, well, we're living in different times here, right? And uh, that's probably some of the best medicine, getting ready to put on these uh, shows for you and, and, and everybody's uh, trying to get technology up to date and all that sort of stuff. But here we are today. Welcome, everybody. Episode number nine of the Mental Health Show. It's been a great success, and we hope you're getting a lot of value out of this. We intend to do a, a lot more. But today we've got, to, I always say I'm not the expert. I bring the experts here to share all the information and getting ready to go back to school. It's a lot different than it was before. Parents used to get excited for back to school and teachers might have got excited. Mm -hmm. and the kids even might have got excited. But now this year is just a little different. So we've got uh, Christine Priest here from the uh, St. Clair Catholic District School Board. Thanks for being here. Thank you. And Glad to be Katie, here. yeah, Katie Colomico, you're from a Lampton Kent District School Board. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having us. Yeah, well, it's uh, this is going to be an interesting conversation. You heard that introduction. Some people normally get excited for this, um, and now there's there's a lot of questions. I would say there's some doubt, fair enough, um, and strong concerns uh, for health, not just physically but mentally, and that's why we're here as well. Christine, I'd like to start with you. If, if you could just kind of tell everybody your role uh, uh, here today. Okay, I'm the mental health and well-being lead for the St. Clair Catholic School Board. So basically a systems lead um, to implement mental health strategies throughout the board. Okay, great. And uh, Katie, talk to us about your role. Sure. So I'm the Christine Priest of the LKDS. So <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I yeah. also am the mental health lead. Uh, and then I also oversee our social work staff who work in our secondary schools. Okay, very good. So as I said, folks, we've got the experts here. And uh, during this broadcast, feel free to uh, post your comments down below and then someone will do their best to get back and respond. We're going to share some online resources with you as well as we have in past shows. Um, well, Christine, let me come over to you. And I guess, honestly, Katie, jump in any time because I'm sure there's going to be a lot of crossover conversation with what we're going to discuss here. Um, but obviously, the, the pandemic has caused some obvious concerns. We probably don't need to go into all the details about that. But how is how is your school board starting to deal with this or what's been the process in getting us to the point of here we go? Oh, that's a good question. Good question. Our board actually hired uh, an emergency management planner. And so there's been probably, I'd say, 20 to 25 people working over the summer to come in with a back to school um, plan. And it's been very carefully thought out. Actually, it's being presented today to our administration. And so it's really um, adhered to, which I, I found very interesting when they were presenting it this morning, facts and evidence, not opinions, which is really important because around the pandemic, mm. there is so many opinions. And it's very important that we listen to the facts and the research and be guided by our public health professionals uh, going back to school and considering all the facts that we're going to have to address when people are back in the schools. Yeah, well, I like how you put that, facts over opinions, um, because uh, there, there is a lot of opinions out there. We all have one, right? And of course, we all think ours is the right one. <laughs> but um, facts are certainly important with all of this, because there, I would imagine there's, uh, uh, pun intended, an education process going along to the, back to the homes, to the parents, the guardians, whatever that looks like, right? So, uh, Katie, uh, could, would you echo that, or is there anything you want to add into that? Yeah, no, I would echo that. I am. Um... Our senior team has worked throughout the summer. We hired extra staff to do some of that mental health work in the summer with our students and families. Um, again, you know, in terms of the health piece, we really take our lead from public health. We're educators and uh, mental health professionals, so we take that lead around the health piece from public health and do stick to those facts um, and share as we know, right? There's been lots of questions that we can't all answer and being honest about that. Um, so again, that's the fact piece, right? Telling what yeah. we know when we know it. Right. And I would imagine uh, the two school boards, uh, Katie and Christine, I imagine you two work uh, very closely together. Yeah, we do. <laughs> we do. We have lots of fun. Um, yes. But yeah, you know, I, I think it's important as a community. Um, our schools are all in the same community, right? So um, working as closely together. And I mean, we're very lucky, and I'm sure we'll get to that around working with School Mental Health Ontario from a mental health perspective. 
of having some consistent practices and approaches um, that all mental health leaders use across the province. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the um, this might be a tough question uh, here. So are the philosophies between the two school boards um, working together well? I would say so. I think that we always try and be on the same page. As Katie yeah. said, we're in the same communities. Um, you know, we go basically from Grand Bend to Tilbury and, and other communities. So we want to be on the same page. And as Katie said, School Mental Health Ontario has been very instrumental in making sure that we have consistent messaging, consistent yeah. practices and consistent protocols, which when you get into mental health, I remember a former um, a supervisor of mine used to say mental health is a black hole. Um, you can go everywhere with mental health and people all have opinions on mental health yep. and we need to be factual. We need to be evidence-based and we need to be consistent. So I think Katie and I and the school boards are really trying to work also with our community agencies on doing yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. And I, the reason I brought that up is because, uh, you know, some two, two separate entities sometimes, you know, have different ways of handling things. But this is something that really needs to be approached together because, like you said, Katie, it's affecting our communities as a whole, right? So that, that I just wanted to reassure everybody watching that that's happening, right? So Yeah, I think, uh, sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I think you'll notice there's different structures in place. So how we set up our mental health supports and board might differ. Um, but the yeah. information and the messaging, um, I would say, is pretty aligned. Yeah. 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 Very well said, Good. Katie. I, I agree. Um, we might have different supports um, to do the yeah. same work, but um, it's the same goal. It's the same goal and same objectives for both. Different goals. paths to the same destination, maybe. Right. Right. Very well said. Good Good way well to put it. Said. I'm going to use that. <laughs> yeah. You can have it. You can write it down. It's not trademark. <laughs> There's a lot of, uh, and let's talk about the supports. You know, you talk about the different supports and some similar supports that are available, but what supports are available for students and families uh, returning to school? Katie, let's start with you. Sure. So in our board, um, we have social workers. So registered social workers who work in our secondary schools. So um, they're all assigned different schools. So they're available to students, um, you know, for direct counseling. They're available to run groups in a virtual way as we can. Um, they're available to families to answer questions. They do a lot of staff capacity building. So that's a big piece too, is, is giving our educators the tools to support these students too. Um, not be the mental health professionals, but kind of the eyes and ears to recognize if a student's struggling. So we have that piece. Um, so we do a lot of early intervention and prevention work. And then in our elementary schools, uh, in the LKDSB, we have what we call psychoeducational clinicians. So they do a lot of our um, testing, but they also provide the mental health mental health supports to students. So again, whether it's you know one to one counseling, classroom presentations, we do a lot of that too in terms of the good for all messaging to students. So just that really the mental well being stuff, um, and then yeah, really like we did it all through the summer. There's really no there should not be a barrier to access mental health supports. So um, whatever the needs are, we want to meet them. So. Generally speaking, I would say students, parents, anyone can talk to their principals and we'll get those supports in place. Okay. Christine, what about your side of things? Well, we basically do the, the same work that Katie just described. We actually um, have social workers, uh, two in our, one in our, one full time in each of our high schools. We only have two high schools and then we have three working in the elementary system that do the clinical work and we have 15 uh, child and youth workers that support um, students and staff actually in classes um, looking at strategies around implementing mental health so one of our uh, programs that we've been doing and we're evaluating that over the last um, three years is called mind up mind up is a science is based in science um, it's a neuroscience curriculum and it teaches children about their brain and how their brain um, impacts their thoughts, feelings, and actions. And we're learning that children before and after the program are really learning that their brain is, um, they need to learn about their brain and uh, how to take care of that. You know, we often teach about, you know, our bodies and our hearts and our arms. If we have a broken leg, we want to take care of our broken leg. But it's really important from a young age, kindergarten, which is when we start the program and we teach it consistently through to grade eight, 
um, is, is learning about our feelings. So it's, it's based in social emotional learning. And uh, we know that the evidence is working well. There's been research done in BC, which has measured children's spit um, from grades four to seven, and that their spit has less cortisol um, compared to those that haven't taken the program. So um, we're, we're quite excited about that program, and um, we're going to continue to implement that program, plus other um, strategies that's come out of School Mental Health Ontario. It's interesting how we've grown over time in the educational system from, uh, well, we'll go back to my day kind of thing, you know, where it, it was physical. Phys ed was a really yeah. big thing, but we didn't talk about our feelings, what you thought, you know, and that was, um, uh, so it's nice to see this. Uh, I've always said, you know, if you break your leg, you go to the doctor, right? If you have mental health, you should go to the doctor. But our our families and students, are they reaching out and saying, I need help, or is this still something we need to keep pushing out there to let them know? I would say it's both. I think we've come a long way in terms of that um, reducing of stigma. I think we have work to do still. Um, mm. So so that's the piece around, you know, making it part of the everyday conversations in classrooms, just talking about it's okay not to be okay. So um, I definitely think um, that we're getting better. I think we've done a really good job um, in our board around educating staff about those signs to look for. Um, and having those conversations with students to make that, you know, that warm connect to a helping professional. Um, so, yeah, I think, and students, students want to learn more. They tell us they want to learn more. They want to talk about it. Um, they want those strategies for better wellness. So um, I definitely, you know, students can self-refer to our, our staff. So, you know, we do have those students or those students who refer their friends, right? So maybe they're comfortable, but they bring their friend down to say, hey, I think they need to talk to somebody. I like how you said it's okay to not be okay. Like, what is not okay? Like, well, you're okay. It's it's good that, that you at least express and uh, uh, talk about these feelings that are going on, which, you know, some of us are better at it than others about talking about our feelings. We don't want to, you know, I think if we share our feelings, maybe we feel vulnerable. Yeah. And we consider that a danger, maybe sometimes, you know, lots of different reasons. But uh, it's good to see that the encouragement is there. Um when you say your families are reaching out, um, what are some of the questions that they're, what are they concerning you with? Um, I, one of the biggest questions that we get, which I'm glad we're doing this, is what supports are available. I think yeah. to talk more about the fact that we do have these mental health supports in schools, because um, until you have to use the system, you don't really think about it, right? So right. Um, I think I think a big piece of our board's work is that parent engagement around letting them know what's available. So, you know, there's student who, sure, it looks like an academic need, but it's really an, an underlying mental health need, right? So, yeah, um, yeah I think I think it's just starting to get out that we have these supports. So um, they reach out for just general questions, wanting support. How do they get support for their student, yeah. their yeah. child, that kind of stuff. Okay, well, let's talk about yeah. School Mental Health Ontario, and, and that's uh, something. Sorry, Christine, did you want to add something yeah, to that? I'll start yeah. talking, sorry. <laughs> That's okay. No, I do want to say it was really, it, it's a really good question, Dave, because we actually um, did a survey this year. And, you know, we think that we're doing a really good job um, sometimes of communicating that our team is there, our student well-being and support team yeah. is there. And um, people didn't really know that we were there. So we had to do a lot of promotion and communication to parents um, via website, via social media because we always just assume that people know that the school board right. supports. And one of the good things about School Mental Health Ontario is that we have this across Ontario. It's consistent. There's one of me and Katie. Oh, bless them. There's um, no me and you. Anyway. <laughs> That's right. Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, they don't have as much fun, right, Katie? No. But anyway, um, so we do have a lot of great work happening across Ontario. And I really want to give kudos to Dr. Kathy Short, who has led this initiative. She's brilliant and uh, really advocated to the government that this is needed. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah. Well, I, I, I think it's, um, again, important. To, we're sort of repeating, but that's okay. We want this message out there that, yeah, I don't necessarily know. I mean, I don't have children in school right now, but I never really thought about, oh, can I go get some mental health for my child there? You know, uh, um, and even... You know, we talk about stomping the stigma, right? You know, it's it's not just the children that are trying to stomp it out. We, the adults, have to go, you know, 
would we be embarrassed if we had to ask for help? Because we don't typically like to ask for help. We're not designed to ask for help necessarily. Um, again, showing sign of weakness, but it really is something that um, um, is is needed. And like you say, it's a growing need, right? And we really. Oh, sorry, Chris. I said I was going to stop talking. No, that's okay. <laughs> I, we, I, go I, ahead, Katie. You go, I, I, you go ahead, Katie. <laughs> this is me and Chris all the time. Um, <laughs> I'm just, I'll just sit back, give you the questions. <laughs> We've done I'll add after you, Katie. I'll add after you. <laughs> we worked really hard about talking about mental health too as a continuum, right? So, you know, I, I think historically it's been really thought of as deficit based, where really it's like we all have mental health. Um, and we can we can have mental illness and still thrive, or we can have really poor mental health with no mental illness, right? So we've done a lot of work around just normalizing that everybody has mental health, just like you were saying about physical health. So, um, and students seem to get that. I, like you say, I think sometimes the adults have a harder time grasping it. Yeah. So that's been a lot of the work we've been doing. And just speaking to that, um, you know, having adults understand that maybe if a child's acting out in a classroom, it may be doing to mental health, right? And so not excluding them from a classroom, but actually welcoming them and making them feel inclusive and safe because behavior is a form of communication. And when we're not, when we're communicating in ways that people don't think is the norm, um, it's perceived maybe sometimes not in the most positive. So we we, I think we have some work to do around uh, supporting children through a mental health lens and why they're doing things the way they're doing. And I think um, that's one of the benefits of the work that Katie and I are doing and, and, and reducing that stigma. Yeah. Well, like Katie said, you know, it, it's working, but we still got a long way to go. Um, we, and, and this, even what we're doing here today on the mental health show, this is just one more way of another channel of putting it out there that this is is all available. So, okay. So Katie and Christine, you, you, you're in your role, but, uh, and what you do with mental health, what about the teachers and the other staff in the schools um, that weren't necessarily educated the way you were for this uh, type of thing? Um, is there training? Are they being provided training and how does that work? Well, we have, we certainly have a lot of training actually on September 2nd in our board, we're having, a whole day, a PD day for mental health and well-being focused on social emotional learning. So that's going to involve bus drivers, uh, custodians, um, everybody that's within our school board, not just teachers, because we all think we need to learn about that and how um, we're trying to um, reduce that stigma. It's really, really important um, to work around that because if we do not provide the capacity um, to teachers, and we also need to consider their mental health and well-being because they're going to be nervous coming back. They have anxiety coming back. They mm -hmm. are maybe dealing with family issues. So we cannot do this just in a, in a silo and only look at students. We need to look at student staff and families. Yeah, I would echo that too. Um, you know, throughout the year we do, our staff get trained in assist. They get trained in mental health first aid. Um, they get trained in safe talk. So they get those trainings. And then we also offer things as they come up, right? So um, all the schools know that if there's something that that school's dealing with that they really need some support in, I'll go and do a staff presentation with them. Um, I run workshops um, regularly. So again, really listening to the staff too of what they think they need, because I might think I know what they want to know. But right. um, so again, there's planned ones and then there's ad hoc ones because something comes up that they really need support in. So what kind of what kind of topics would these would these be? Can you give some examples of uh, what might come up? Yep. So I can. Sorry, Chris. No, uh, you go ahead and I'll add. If we, if we, <laughs> go ahead. If we're doing the same work, so it doesn't matter. Uh, so topics around, you know, anxiety and depression and what to look for in students, right? So again, you're not the mental health professional, but here's maybe some signs. Um, we talk about, you know, duration and frequency of seeing these behaviors. So those might be some, the social emotional learning, um, you know, we'll go in and give them some strategies around that. Um, general relationship building, like, it's stuff that I think sometimes it's hard to connect that it, it does it does tie into wellness, right? Like just that mm -hmm. sense of and being a caring adult and, and just things around that that really does impact all students. Um, and I will say our staff are hungry for the information, mm -hmm. right? Like they, like you said, they're educators. So this is not, they might have some training in it, but they're hungry for the information and really want to do what's best for students. So 
I would agree. I, I think one of the things that, um, and both our boards are working on this, is a physical literacy project mm -hmm. um, in Chatham, Kent, and kids need to move. And as we know, kids are not moving as much as they used to. And we know that uh, the research says every 15 minutes, you just get up in a class and you do a two to three minute activity actually improves attention and focus. And so just getting those messages through, through everyday mental health in the classroom activities or other activities um, created. Um, School Mental Health Ontario just developed a resource for teachers that's called the first 10 days of school. And so it's an excellent resource that teachers can pull and use um, for their first 10 days. It goes well beyond that. And as we know, and I think Katie's the same way, we have to keep training people and we have to keep getting that message out there because it does yeah. evolve, right, Katie? Yeah. yeah, and I think and I think it's really important and, you know, again, we're getting better at this, is it also hearing from students about what they think the adults in their world need to know, yeah. right? Like yeah. I always learn something new when I talk to a student about what they really think is important, right? So I don't want to lose sight of, you know, we are the experts, but the kids really are the experts too. So, well, we tend to, way. sorry, go ahead, Christine. And I was going to say in the same with the parents, right? Because we yeah. often assume, right? It's so it's parent and youth yeah. engagement are a really big part of our work as well. Yeah, we tend to, well, like say, as parents, uh, do this, do it like this, you know, <laughs> we, I know better, <laughs> right? Yeah. No, really. Uh, we, the adult, think we know everything, but uh, we slow down a little bit and listen, right? Which is a, a, a it's a tough thing to do sometimes in a, in a busy environment, which schools can be a very busy environment. Um, teachers are given so much time to do things in, and so you, we tend to get rushed, right? Um, what? How does how does a teacher or one of the staff like when they recognize or see something happening? How do they handle that, and and where does it go from there? So we, bo we both have pathways of care. So we we actually do training like Katie's board does on recognizing signs and symptoms. And then they would um, put in a referral form um, to our team and we triage that. And then we do, we go talk to the student or the um, principal and the teacher, gain more information. And then we um, usually send a consent home um, for supports um, to our parents and that is elementary only. Um, secondary is different because um, we know that students can self-refer. And um, then we provide supports. And we usually do assessments with the students and plans with that have outcome base. So there is a refer pathway of referral within both boards. Yeah. Right. Okay. Now, there's, there's obviously going to be, uh, well, I'll use the number 101 different scenarios. Uh, coming back to school, there's there's those that are returning from a previous year to the same school. Uh, there might be those coming back, still living in the same city, but going to a different school. And then my first time, my first day of school. Um, how how there, there's so many different things happening there. How do you group that all together and make it work? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> Guess we're going to find out, right? I guess, really. You know, I, I think that we just, um, like, we're doing a lot of work in, uh, we're creating videos around, you know, hand washing. We're creating videos around masks and actually having kids create these videos of wearing masks and what that looks like. And I think we just have to do our best to, to create this sense that we've got this, um, as again, as the adults, um, and, and be comfortable with the unknown, like, right? Like, that's the one thing that we just, what we know today might be different tomorrow, right? So I, th I think just doing, uh, it sounds hokey, but doing the best we can with what we have right now. Yeah, fair and enough. That's, that's acknowledging it's hard. You know, I'm a parent of kids going back to school. It's acknowledging it's scary, um, but acknowledging that we all want what's best for the kids in our system, right? So we're going to keep them safe and we're going to follow public health and we're going to give staff the resources they need. We're going to give the supports to students, right? And, and we're, we're just going to see, we're just, we're just going to go, right? Yeah. But that's just, like, I don't know. I like that. No, no. And, and tough question. And, uh, but yeah. the reason I ask that is, is, is because it's, it's fair to put out there that we recognize the school boards recognize that this is going to be hard. Mm -hmm. Nobody, you know, cause you know, a lot of the things we see or read or whatever is like, it'll be okay. It'll be okay. Well, we don't know. It's going to be tough. Let's just recognize that. Um, but the, the challenges that are going to come along the way are, are working to have 
you know, support in place for the yeah. things that are going to come along, likely. Yeah, and I, and I think it is. It's it's planning for multiple scenarios, and um, you know, just really having those supports in place. And I think Chris, your board's the same. Our board's done a really good job of of working through the summer, a to have the supports all throughout the summer, but really working mm -hmm. towards having them ready and, and ready to go. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. We just did. Um, we're doing full day trainings of the the principals today and tomorrow around the back to school plan and and just looking at at that. And like Katie said you know what, there is going to be 101 things that may come up and we'll just deal with it when it comes up because it's hard to plan for the unknown. And um, like Katie said, our administrators have been working extremely, extremely yeah. hard over the summer. And and I don't, I'm not sure people realize how hard they've worked, but um, it's been, it's been a lot of work. Well, we usually think that once summer comes along, everybody, including yeah. the teachers, take the summer off. <laughs> right? There's not been much of a summer this year. Right. Right. Everybody has worked so hard. Yeah. Um, yeah. So hard well, at, at every level. It's an important, uh, hey, this is serious stuff, right? I mean, you, you know, mm -hmm. in, in many different ways. Now, we're talking about the don't knows that are probably going to rise and go, oh, didn't think of that one. But what are some of the issues that uh, you see coming that, that the school boards are preparing for? Christine, so, we'll start with you this time. So for us, I, you know, we were involved in summer learning and it was really interesting um, to see sometimes how resilient the children are. I think the biggest, um, you know, if you're doing virtual online learning is the tech issues, right? Mm -hmm. And people getting frustrated with the tech issues. But we've also had a few questions from the parents that they're they're quite worried about, you know, people catching the virus, right? And so what are the um, guidelines that we're putting in place to keep everybody safe? And there is significant guidelines that I'm sure both our school boards are putting in place to keep people safe. But that, you know, we cannot guarantee 100% safety when we can't see what the virus looks like. It's not, you know, it's, it's a very different thing we're de dealing with. And I think that every single person on this planet has been impacted by the pandemic. And that's oh. what we need to remember, every single person. And we know that their mental health has suffered. We just know that. Yeah. And in all ages being dealt with here, right? You know, I mean, the the, the young person in kindergarten is certainly going to have different issues than the uh, the teenager in grade eight, right? <laughs> you know, um, and, and, and so the, the preparation certainly mm -hmm. is important, but like I say, uh, recognizing what we can. But I, I imagine you talked about the first 10 days happening. Um, the first 10 days in, in regular times is always, you know, the mm -hmm. student and the teacher feeling each other out. What can I get away with? You know, that sort of stuff to uh, and, and kids just being kids. But what about the the social interaction that we're used to? Um, and, and everybody's different, of course, but uh, kids like to hug each other a lot of times. They like to support each other, even just a pat on the back and high fives and all that sort of stuff. How, how do we see that affecting all of this? Well, Katie, you get to go first this time. I was like, look at me, let Chris take this one. <laughs> <laughs> again, again, it's going to come down to creativity, right? We were, we are living in a different situation. Um, yeah. you know, part of the work I'm doing is how do we build that sense of community in the classroom without those things, right? And I think it's just having a plan going in as to what that's going to look like. Um, there's going to be situations that happen, right? Like that we, you know, we can't control if a child goes and touches another child, right? But it's that right. education piece around. And that's why we've created some videos about why do we wash our hands? Why do we, why are we wearing masks? And they're they're based for different ages of development, so kids can kind of understand. And it's just going to be that messaging over and over and over again as to why we're doing it and acknowledging it's hard, right? Um, there's there's no magic answer. We're just again we're going to approach everything day by day, um, but things are going to happen, right? Oh yeah, and things are going to happen. Honestly, uh, to respond to that, things are going to happen just like things would happen right. before the pandemic. You know, yes. Tommy and Johnny getting a fight in the school yard. Yeah. Those things are going to happen. Bloody noses yeah. are going to happen. Like, you know, yeah. this is just a different kind of thing that's going to happen. But, it, you know, and we're learning from all of this, I guess, right? Yeah, and, and we just plan the best we can. And again, I think we have some really good plans in place. Um, and then we adjust as we need to when those 101 situations come up that we weren't anticipating. Um, yeah. 
but you know, uh, there is the, you know, the first 10 day document that's really good about how do we create this in this world that we're living in right now. Yeah. Christine, do you want to add to that? No, I think, you know, I know that our board and probably like Katie's safety was number one, mental health was number two. So how do we address the mental health of all our people in our board um, going into the school year? And that is one of the main resources that we'll be putting forward. We've also created a video um, for all our staff and um, on pandemic and returning back, which will be shown on our PD day and one for parents. But like Katie said, it's unknown, right? And we can just do what we can do and uh, go forward. Um, We can't look back. Um, We can learn, you know, from things that may come, but we'll try our best as well. I I don't know that there's too many people who are jealous of you right now. (laughs) (laughs) We have the best dogs in the world. I'm just saying. Yes, we do. Because we have to work with each other. That's right. (laughs) You yeah. guys are a lot of fun. <laughs> we like to think about each other. <laughs> you know what? And I, and I think there's a shift. Like I, with the safety first mental health, like mental health is a is one of our board's priorities right now. Like we are recognizing that for all, right? For our system, for our educators, and mostly our students, right? So it's it's yeah. Anyways. We've been, well, you sort of, you helped me lead into my next question here, Katie, is, uh, you know, we've been talking about, you know, the, the students and, and, uh, we and their mental health and 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 we've talking about the families of the students and and how they can get help what about the educators and the the teachers and p- people in your roles uh, any of the staff directly dealing with this what about their mental health and and what's support for them <laughs> i can so okay go ahead well, I know that we're really looking at that. We because if we don't have well staff, we don't have well schools. Period. Right. Yeah. And we need well kids, so it is a cyclical thing, right? Um, and so we really need to consider that. And so that's in that's part of our returning back to school plan, and mm-hmm. looking at that and get getting some more um, focused resources in that area is really, really important right now. We really want everybody to feel safe and well when they come back to school. Yeah, yeah, I would agree. And I think, you know, the more um, we can give them resources to support the work that they're doing and acknowledging, like, you guys are doing the heavy lifting. Like, you know, yes, we have a lot of work to do, but you guys are in it doing the heavy lifting. So just acknowledging that sometimes is, is helpful. Um, yep. You know, letting them know what, as a member of the board, what, you know, external resources are available to them if they need you know, if they need that support. So always just reminding them that, again, it's okay for them not to be okay as well. And just how do we support them through that? But they're, they're working hard. So they yeah. need to know that they're working hard and they're, and they're doing the best they can. Well, everybody yeah. likes to feel appreciated, right? Yes. You'll never break somebody's shoulder by doing too much of this. <laughs> <don't know. laughs> and, and thanks and, for showing our websites because I think that the staff and, and students and families can go to both our websites and access many, many really good resources. Um, there is their- a lot of resources there and yeah. it's been very well put together. I spent some time before mm-hmm. we did this to go through and I was like, wow, I you know, wish I'd have had that. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. a it's uh well, interesting times uh, uh, for sure. And, and um, I'm, I'm sure we're probably going to be okay, but because of all the hard work that's going on, but uh, everybody wants to breathe a little bit, right? You know, we'll, we'll see uh, that first day of school is going to be interesting uh, when everybody comes home to talk about how was your first day. Um, as much as the schools have, are doing and what's available, which is incredible, what about uh, school board's interaction with local agencies? Um, what's that look like? Christine, I give you permission to start first. <laughs> I'm getting it. <laughs> We actually, our pathway of care includes um, referring out um, to both the local mental health agencies or Canadian Mental Health Association. We also have mental health and addiction nurses that work very closely with the school boards and are part of our mental health strategy, um, supporting children that go into hospital, back out of hospital, back to schools, um, maybe have trouble locating or working with the medical system, they support them and also around addictions, addictions and substance abuse. So we really, I feel, and maybe 
I'm sure Katie does, that we have a really good relationship with um, both our children's mental health agencies and our um, Canadian Mental Health Association, also the hospitals. Um, we do have meetings regularly to look at how we can better um, service our clients or our students um, through the, that system. So we truly really want a seamless approach that they don't have to tell their story five times going through every system. Right, right. Katie? I would echo that. I think, you know, I think we work really hard about doing what's best for kids, mm -hmm. right? So what makes the most sense for kids at the moment um, in terms of, um, sometimes we do a navigator role too, right? So, you know, Zoom presents with these yeah. concerns, we can address what we can within the school system, but we navigate them to know, you know, rebound or access or St. Cloud Child and Youth or, right? So sometimes we just play that connection piece for them. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes we play that connection piece um, in our board for the parent too, right? Sometimes mm -hmm. we help that parent get connected to what they need to best support their student, so. Yeah, all right, um, here's a question for you. So it's my first day of school or my first day back. You can take whichever one you want. The parents have a, a lot to do with how this first day is gonna go, right? You know, on on educating their, their son or daughter on how to behave on the first day of school, is that right? Like, what's the advice can you give or what's the conversation that should be happening uh, first day of school before they get on the bus or get taken to school? Katie. <laughs> You're <laughs> I guess I'm just gonna, yeah, I guess I'm thinking of it from a parent perspective, right? Because that will be yep. on the first day yep. of school, you know, sending one of my children off to grade nine, right? The first day of grade nine, which is a, a big deal. And I think, you know, I we've already started those conversations about what it's going to look like and that it's going to yep. be different um, and, and to make the best of it, right? But, you know, I talk to them about proper hand washing. I talk to them about the importance of wearing their masks. And I talk about the fact that this is going to be hard for people. So you might see different reactions from kids that you haven't seen before, right? So just recognizing that everybody's coming from a different experience of this whole pandemic, right? Um, so yeah, like I, I think it's just that open, you know, and I'm excited to hear about what happened on your first day of school and what worked and what didn't work, um, right? So I think trying to keep it as normal as we can with what those general expectations are. Yeah. Uh, their first day, they're a part of history. Right? Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Last year, they were a part of history. This year, they <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah. Christine, we'll, we'll come over to you. Yes. Well, I was going to echo what Katie said. It's really about treating it as normal as possible um, and realizing that your own emotions certainly impact your children's emotions and that we need to consider our own mental well-being before um, we start talking about this with our children and to be, you know, be as honest, be as factual, um, obviously not give your opinions, but also um, be as supportive as you can with your children because they may, they may be anxious. I know that we're seeing children that really are worried about going back to school. This pandemic has really impacted them. So we really want to make sure that we're supporting them. And both our boards, um, Dave, have been doing a lot of transitional work right. with um, those students the le these last two weeks before they go back to school. Um, so our mental health staff and spec ed staff have been doing that work um, to support those families that we know about. Well, I would say uh, uh, if I had children going back to school after watching this and listening to both of you today, that I would feel more reassured of all the great things that are in place to provide safety and concerns, you know, and questions that I have, all these resources that are available. Folks, you can go to the websites that we're going to show here, of course, but we'll be posting and uh, you'll be able to see in the descriptions. And if you have any questions, put them in the comments. Somebody will, it might take some time. They're getting ready for back to school here but um, somebody will respond to your comments and questions. And, and I would just feel a whole lot better as a parent knowing that these types of things are available. Um, almost time to wrap up. So Katie, we lost you there for a minute, but we'll, we'll, we'll come, I don't know, it was Christine's. Did you cut me out? <laughs> I can't I believe, no, I'm just kidding. Get her out of here. <laughs> I like I, I like to uh, wrap things up, uh, but I uh, want to give you both an opportunity to, uh, you know, maybe fill in some gaps that we haven't talked about. And Katie, you get to start this time. Oh, okay. 
Um, yeah, I, I guess I just would say, you know, if you have a concern or you have a question, like that's part of me and I'm going to speak for me, but I think Christine's role as well is really to be that connect to the board around what mental health looks like in our board, right? Like we oversee the strategy and the action plan. So reach out. I love talking to people. I love hearing from people, you know, what we're doing well, but also what we can do better. So. Mm -hmm. right. Yes, I'm going to echo what Katie said. She said it perfectly. Reach out. Um, we are here to support we are here to guide and um, really not be opinionated and all that kind of stuff. We just really want to help and help from a sincere way. Fantastic. Well, again, uh, thank you for all your uh, all your all your frontline work, quite honestly, and uh, support that's out there. And uh, we'll see how first day goes. I'm sure we'll uh, maybe we'll have to have you back to ask you about how was your first day at school. Right. Oh, so I thought it would be wonderful. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> thank you both ladies very much. And thanks to all of you for watching mm -hmm. here again today on the mental health show. We hope you're getting lots of value out of these episodes and we will be back again soon. Take care of yourself and each other until next time. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.